Um, and there is a lot of, I mean, reason. Um, again, we're dealing with some horrible tragedies right now, and there's worse and worse ones every year, but occasionally there is some good news. So we wanted to wrap up um, the discussion part before taking questions from the audience um, with a positive development. Um, so, um, Doctor, if you would um, share the good news yeah, with the audience. Sure. And uh, I, just, I just want to add what, what Richard said. I mean, I, I am not a lawyer. I'm an architect, archaeologist, I would like to use the law as a tool to protect cultural heritage. Uh, internationally as well as domestic. It's not good for me to have a good law, international, if I don't have a domestic law that will protect uh, my, my, my own country. So it's a combination between international law as well as domestic law, but a working law. It's good to have the law, but it's good to have it if you, if you can apply it. That's, and that's, that's lead us to this case. Uh, I would like to use the law to protect this alabaster stone inscription. This alabaster stone inscription was excavated in the temple of uh, the Queen of Sheba, known as Awam Temple, in the city of Marib, just at the border to the Saudi Arabia, where the quarter, the empty quarter. The Awam Temple uh, was excavated originally by our foundation starting in the 50s. And we continued the work up to 2007. We were forced to stop our working. Uh, we did uh, excavated uh, one of the most famous uh, monumental uh, temple complex that can be described as uh, the best in South Arabia. Uh, the temple itself is full of uh, many inscriptions, monumental inscriptions inscribed with the South Arabian language. It can be, in fact, considered as the library of the Yemen. It documents all aspects of life. We, in one season, we were able to excavate at least 300, 400, 500 different inscriptions spread all over the temple. In a particular area of the temple, I don't have a pointer, but this is called the annex area. At the floor of the annex area, we, uh, they used to, 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 to floor by using old inscriptions. Sometimes they don't have a use of an inscription, it's lost its function, so they will reuse it and put it in the floor. One of those inscriptions I refer to as MB, that's Mahram Balqis, 2005-I-50, was excavated by our team in 2005 and fully, just as you see, recorded at the site, documented, and fully exposed in 2006. 2007, the world start, we stopped working, we left the whole area. This is the way that we left it. It was stolen. It was taken out of the floor. It was taken out, ripped out from the excavation, from a temple, brought out the country to France and sold in an auction house for 55,000 uh, uh, euro. This object, archaeological object, excavated, documented, even published, took its way out of the country legally because somebody faked papers. So where is the law here? How, how the law can protect me? Anyway, Soon we, 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 we discovered this theft, we started to do something, contacted uh, all different police, police, uh, French police, Interpol, uh, did a campaign, multimedia campaign, and thanks God we were successful and we got it back. So we have it back. And this is something to report. <laughs> I mean, it's a good feeling, but remember, this is only one piece, and we are talking about thousands. Some that we know about, some we have no idea of where are they. Because, unfortunately, those groups use this business, and I call it business because for them it's a business, as investment. So, those that we know about is that, that we see in the auction houses, but 90% they are objects that we have no idea where are they. We know that they have been taken out from context, but we have no idea. So at least we have something good to report. Thank you.
Thank you.